Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial here on unitycookie.com and this of course is the third in the tower defense tutorial series. It's a bit of a part one of two we'll be putting together in total what I'm about to show here and that is a bit of a starting GUI setup and the ability to place turrets and our structures and such in your tower defense game. Take a look at this, have a pretty uh, just basic little scene here and then we have the option to open a panel with some build settings here and we get a uh, this grid that, op that that shows up and then we can drop things onto it and I can choose a type so in this case it's either the cannon that we already made or the missile launcher that we made also and a special new one that's grayed out here that'll be coming soon so in this case let's say we want to drop on some of the missile launchers we can just hover around and click and it'll drop it right in and the same with the cannon so we're going to be putting this together. You might notice, of course, that uh, the score, cache, shields, wave, all this stuff isn't actually hooked up to anything yet. It's just there for decoration and being ready for when we do in a future tutorial. But it's there, it's ready. We'll just be going over how to put together some of that. One thing, make sure if you're starting with this tutorial that you check out our other NGY tutorials that should be coming up at the same time as this if it's new to you. Just we have some of the basics and installing the free edition of NGY, which as you see here, drops in this uh, little logo up top and then not for retail on the bottom uh, but otherwise functions exactly the same as the full NGY and we will be using this mainly because I just learned learned it completely in and out or just whatever bit of it anyway for the awesome Eat Sheep game which you should also check out while you're at it here and built just about all the UI in NGY for that and it was great to learn so easy much 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 better than using the built-in GUI system for Unity and Unity 3 so anyway that's why we're using it it's awesome and make sure you check out those other tutorials to get up to speed if you need to otherwise I'll go over most of it in here you know I'm not gonna leave anyone behind but it would help if you check those others and here let's get on to the actual tutorial so we can figure out how to set this up so if we take a look here, basically in this first tutorial, the first again, sort of a part one of two, we're going to be doing just the GUI. Uh, we won't be actually setting up the turret placement and such yet. That'll be in a second one. But here, let's get the GUI going and let's see how that's all come together here. It's back to the scene view. If we look at the UI root, we have a couple new things added on here from the NGY basic tutorial. If you're looking at that and wondering, hey, this looks different. Under the panel, or sorry, under instead of under camera having an anchor and then a panel, I've added in a panel and then two anchors. So the reason for this is everything that's under one panel and sharing uh, the same atlas will be crunched down into one single draw call. So before, in this case, since I have two different anchors, and I'll explain the reason for that in a second, since I have those two, I didn't want to have two anchors and then two panels inside of those and then double my draw calls. So I put a panel top and then two anchors below that. So just a little separate way of doing it. Technically, since there's so few items in this GUI, it really won't make a big difference, but it's kind of uh, just good good practice to get, especially you know with this game, it's probably going to get quite a bit more complicated in the GUI area later. So anywho, we have the panel. Uh, then inside of that, each of these anchors and the first one is a bottom left anchor which we're using to stick the GUI stuff let's take a look at it here right to the left over there and as you just saw there sometimes if you move things around and you change the screen size NGUI won't update exactly right away so all you gotta do is say once you change it hit control S and then control S again double save it and it'll update to be proper so anywho that's going on there okay so Let's see, right, so the bottom left anchor, uh, we have the build panel anchored over here, and the, the right anchor here has all of the, uh, the bits that are held over to the right. So we have the, uh, basically all the, you know, cache, gore, shields, wave, and the two info box beneath them. And the way these anchor work is simply by setting a, a side that we want them to be anchored to. So let's take a look at it in the scene view to make it a little more obvious here. And I'm backwards, there we go. So if I look at the anchor bottom left, its anchor is set right over here, which is technically where the edge of the screen is. And the same thing for the right, right over there. I can switch it right here under the side option and set it to say maybe we want it to be top or center or anything at all like that. 
So uh, very simple to set, easy to use, very powerful and useful, especially if you're making uh, an app or something again for, for mobile. As always, you need to be a little more fancy. Uh, this will make sure that the UI is stuck to the sides, uh, however you want it to be exactly, and not floating around looking all weird. So good to uh, good to use these for sure. So I'm gonna keep that bottom right, so it stays where I want it. Now inside of here, I guess we'll take a look at the right side first. I've got a couple uh, bits and pieces putting it together, a few labels. So once again, all this is is a text label. Cache, score, shields, and wave. Just type in what you want. Drop in the font and all that, uh, as usual. Uh, once again, if this is if you're not sure what the heck is going on here with these, make sure you go and check out the NGUI Basics tutorial as well as the NGUI Font tutorial. It'd be a good one. It's a bit technical getting a, a font dropped in, and you know if you're really just starting on this, the NGUI Starter tutorial that, that explains how to install the free version and get NGUI in general set up so that we can do some JavaScripting with it later on. Otherwise, you'll have some issues there. So anyway, just a couple labels and an info box dropped behind it. Notice, of course, each of the labels, their depth is ahead of the info box that they're showing ahead of it. Otherwise, you know, just like such, you would end up too far there. So the info box just has a bit of a color tint. It's semi-see-through, just a regular slice sprite, nothing too fancy. Over on the left-hand side, we have a little bit more going on. And here we have several buttons, with each side having just a regular background, just the sprite, the image that it is there. Nothing too fancy, really. On these, we have some items that are, getting, let's say, uh, making the animations happen, such as you see the, the arrow flips around and the whole panel comes in, uh, various things like that. And we'll take a look at that in a second, uh, once we have just the GUI covered here. So just to show how this all comes together, then if we actually make this a split screen so we can see a little bit better. And do the double control S to show things. Now if, let's see, once again, just trying to make this work a little better on the small screen that I'm working with here. Okay, there we go. So as you're setting up this GUI, the only thing that you got to really worry about is making sure items, you know, sit as they ought to be when you start them. So inside of this build panel with each of these, you know, just the usual, all you have to do is move it around and you can watch and see exactly how it fits. Same for the other items. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, so we have the top panel, then these two anchors, and inside of the anchor bottom left, I have another panel. And just like this, you can keep stacking panels inside of panels inside of anchors. Anchors, you'll end up with trouble if you start putting one anchor inside another. Generally, good not to do that. Um, it might seem to work sometimes, but end up causing problems later. It's just been a little iffy for me, so just probably shouldn't since it's an anchor anyway. But you can stack panels like this, keep going in. And the reason to do that is, uh, number one, really, for organization. So I can, as you see here, have all of these inside of this single panel, all these buttons, and move them around real nice and easy. Versus all of these are separate objects, so I have to, you know, select the ones I want or whatnot. The other reason is that this panel is actually controlling or it is the piece that's actually being animated. So whenever the user clicks on the arrow, this whole panel animates in at once. And that's much, much better, obviously, than telling each and every item to animate in, synchronized, animate out, synchronized. That would be, you know, besides just a nightmare to, to code and get working properly all at once, it would obviously be much less performance efficient. So single panels are good. And speaking of the animation, let's take a look at how that is put together. So, just once more, looking at how this actually works in game, when we click on the arrow, well, it's over, overlapping here a bit because our screen is too small, but the arrow rotates around and this whole item comes flying in. Pretty simple, and just two small things are doing that. So, let's take a look. We have on the arrow itself a special, oh, to the top level of the arrow here we have a tween rotation script and this is added simply by selecting the arrow make sure you select the top level and go to component ngui tween and then the tween rotation just that one right there and what that's doing uh, whenever we call this and that'll be from a script uh, that we're telling it to do this goes from and then two and within this certain duration here and with these options so we've got the option for whether it's linear, ease in, ease out, etc. 
the style that it's going to do one time, it'll continuously loop it or ping pong back and forth. The duration, of course, is just how long it takes to go through that entire tween animation. Uh, and if anyone's not familiar, I wasn't until fairly recent actually, tween is just another word for animation, basically. Just a tween animation, same thing really. <clears throat> Event receiver. If you have something, uh, maybe another script, that you want to be called instantly when this tween finishes, just drag and drop the object that that script is attached to right here onto the event receiver, and then type in a function to call. So it might be do something, and I know that script is on the main camera, so I drop it in there. And then as soon as this tween finishes, it's going to automatically call do something on the main camera. So what it does basically is uh, send a message to that object on all scripts on it. So maybe it would be, you know, when it opens, uh, make something happen, whatever. Very useful. Very, very useful to have indeed. Let me turn these off. Okay. So that's that. And in this case, we're setting it to go uh, here with this from and to. We're telling it it should start at zero and end up at zero, negative 180, zero. So that's simply setting the transform. So zero, 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 and then it becomes negative 180 which is just flipped around. So very simple on that tween rotation script. The second half is the full panel which again slides in or back out. So this has a tween position script which is added simply by going to component NGUI tween and then position. And as you're seeing here there's all sorts of other things you can do with this. Spring position, color, uh, scale, transform volume, lots of good stuff you can add on very simply to animate with NGUI. And they all have these same basic controls so once you learn one they all pretty much uh, will make good sense. So on this panel uh, again we have this tween position, position script you should have just added or are looking at at least. Uh, again the same things, the method, the style, the duration I said a little bit quicker on this so the large panel comes out and doesn't seem to take forever. A tween group and such we can ignore. In this one, the from, this is now acting on the position. So all you need to do is check where you want that to start. In my case, I just, you know, position this exactly where it needed to be. And then I have it going all the way out to zero, which happens to be exactly where I want this to end, right about there. So that's exactly where it goes to. And it knows it starts at negative 275. So it goes from there to there. A nice thing, uh, or just another nice thing about this tween position, in fact all the tweens, is that you can tell it to play forward or backward simply by saying tween.play from a script. When you tell it true or false, true will play it forward, going from to, and false will play it backwards, which would be to from. So basically it moves it back. So no need to set up complicated methods of reversing the animation or anything at all. It just plays it right backward. So that's it for uh, tweening that. Now I guess uh, we have some time still in this part one of the GUI setup. We'll take a look at actually how the script handles uh, calling these tween functions and making them happen. Uh, try not to look at the other bits yet. Saving that for uh, part two. So let's uh, open up in the scripts the in-game GUI if you have the files. Or you can go ahead and just create these. Once again going with the, uh, the method that got such uh, rave reviews apparently people liked where I have everything pre-built and I'll just show you how it comes together. Also listen to uh, some of the comments and made sure there are tons and tons of uh, comments in the code now so it's easy to see exactly what's going on here for you guys afterward. So good stuff to have there. So if we take a look at this function a toggle build panel which very handily fits right in this size of a window here. Oops. So as the comment says this happens whenever the build panel arrow is clicked. So this function will be called whenever it's clicked, and indeed if we go to our arrow, if you scroll down about halfway, you'll notice that there is a UI button message script. And this is just another NGUI component that you can add by going to component, NGUI, interaction, and then a button message. And this allows any button when clicked to send a message and call it on whatever object we want. So in this case, it's calling, or the target is the main camera right here, and it's calling the function name toggle build panel, which I set in there. You just type it in just like so. So on the main camera, of course, is my script in game GUI. That's the one you'll be creating right now. And on that, 
it happens to be a function called function toggle build panel. So again, whenever this arrow is clicked, it will let's go back to the arrow. It'll this UI button message script will call <laughs> sorry, how to explain this easily. Uh, it'll call the function that you type in here. So toggle build panel, it'll call it on this object, the main camera, which has in-game GUI. So boom, we end up here calling this. So what it does is first text a boolean we have set uh, whether or not the build panel is open or not. If it is open, of course we want to close it. We were just we just clicked on the arrow and now we want to close it. So we're going to hide uh, in this case all the build tiles. Ignore that for now. <laughs> That'll come in part two. That'll be happening. Uh, more importantly, we're going to uh, fly the build panel out. So it's going off the screen. Uh, so we just do build panel tweener dot play false. The same thing for the arrow. We're playing it false and we set the build panel open, the boolean there, to be closed. That's uh, it's false. So this build panel tweener, what this is, is a attachment to the tween position. So if you remember on the build panel, right here, or the, the panel that's holding all the build buttons, it has this tween position script which is attached to the in-game GUI on that variable. So you have the build panel tweener and the build panel arrow tweener open this up a bit more. So you see their build panel arrow tweener, build panel tweener, and they're just drag and dropped in, just like anything else. So panel build gets dropped into the build panel tweener and the button arrow into there. And it just automatically grabs a script, of course. And it grabs a script because uh, we're setting that as a type, where normally you would say, you know, material or game object or transform. I set the type of this as the name of the a script. I'm not sure if we went over that in any of the other Lunar Lander tutorials, if you've already seen those and such. Just so you know, that's how you attach a, a, a script directly via, via variable. So we're going to hit that up just like that. And then we can simply call build panel tweener dot play. It's calling a function out of that script, playing it backwards if we're closing it. Or, so again, if we go through here, the Toggle build panel is called when the arrow is clicked. If the build panel is open, we're going to close it. Else, we're going to go through and first of all hide all the tiles. Again, something we'll get into in part two more. Uh, and then we're going to fly in the build panel. So all we're doing is playing it true, playing the build arrow tweener true, so that's flopping it around a point backwards, and we're marking the build panel as open. So, pretty darn straightforward there. Again, just looking at it once more in game. All that happens is we click on it, it realizes it is closed, so it opens, it rotates around the arrow, click it again, it rotates the arrow and closes it. Very straightforward. All being done uh, straight through NGY and a little bit of extra scripting. Yeah, this UI button message, which is called on click. Here also, uh, you can set uh, some extra options if you want it to be on mouse over, on mouse out, on press, on release, double click. In fact, maybe, you know, in the future you make this, say, on mouse over. And then, simply by mousing over this, it changes. So, it could be a simpler way, maybe, of opening up the menu. Who knows? Anyway, lots of nice little options in there that you can use. And that's it for part one of getting in the starting in-game GUI. Again, all you'll need for your script is this part, the function toggle build panel. And it, you can ignore all these parts. Delete this in case you're quick copy pasting or reading off the screen. All we need to do is have this function for this half of the tutorial. And then make sure you have the NGY variables. So whether the build panel is open or not, just a simple Boolean, the connection to the build panel tween tweener, and the build panel arrow tweener and that's dropped right on the main camera. Or you could put that wherever you want technically as long as you then attach that of course to anything that's calling it, such as the UI button message here. So that's it. That'll be uh, everything for the GUI just to start with here. And then we'll be going on in part two of this, setting it up so that you actually have the tiles so you can hover over and click and drop on your turrets. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.